Welcome back, our father's business, my father's business, back to business, 40 days, 40 nights, part 10. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Ephesians 4, 3. It takes both God's power and our effort to produce a loving Christian community. Cultivating community takes honesty. You will have to care enough to lovingly speak the truth, even when you would rather beat over the bush or the problem or ignore the issue. Most people have no one in their lives who love them enough to even tell them the truth, even when it's painful, so they continue in their self-destructive ways. Often we know what needs to be done and said to someone, but fear keeps us from saying anything. The Bible tells us to speak the truth in love. Sometimes you have to care enough to lovingly confront one who is sinning or be tempted to sin. Everyone knows about the problem, but no one talks about it openly. This creates a sick environment of secrets where gossip thrives. Ephesians 4.25 Until you care enough to confront and resolve the issue, you will never grow close to each other. When conflict is handled correctly, we grow closer to each other by facing and resolving our differences. The Bible tells us there is a right time and a wrong way to do everything. Thoughtless words have lasting wounds. Pride builds up walls between people. Immediately builds bridges. 1 Peter 5, 5. The proper dress for fellowship is a humble attitude. We receive God's grace by humbling, admitting we need it. You can develop humility by admitting your weakness, being patient with others' weaknesses, being open to correction, and pointing the spotlight on others. Romans 12, 16. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, it is thinking of yourself less, thinking more of others. Courtesy is respecting our differences and being considerate of each other's feelings, being patient with people who irritate us. There is always at least one difficult person, usually more than one. God puts people in our presence for both their benefit and ours. They are an opportunity for growth and a test of fellowship. We will love them as brothers and sisters and treat them with dignity. Will we love them as brothers and sisters and treat them with dignity? The truth is we all have annoying traits. Courtesy is to understand where people are coming from, find out their history. When you know what they've been through, you will more be understanding. Real community happens when people know it is safe to share their doubts and fears without being judged. Confidentiality is very important. What is shared in the group needs to stay in your group or the group needs to deal with it. Not gossip. God hates gossip, especially when it is thinly disguised as a prayer request for someone else. Proverbs 16, 28. We have to make it a habit of meeting together. You have to spend time with people, a lot of time to build a deep relationship. Community is built not on convenience, We'll get together when I feel like it, but on the conviction that I needed for spiritual help. The first Christians met together every day. Biblical fellowship, we would share our true feelings, authenticity, encourage each other, maturity, support each other, sympathy, forgive each other, mercy, speak the truth in love, honestly, admit our weaknesses, humility, respect our differences, courtesy, not gossip, confidentiality, and make the group a priority. Frequency, 2 Corinthians 5.18. Relationships are always worth restoring. Paul taught that our ability to get along with each other is a mark of spiritual maturity. This is why Paul was so embarrassed that the members of church was taking each other to court. 1 Corinthians 6.5. You must be a peacemaker. Matthew 5, 9. Jesus said, Blessed are those who work for peace, those who actively seek to resolve conflict. Peacemaking resolves conflict. Peacemaking is not avoiding the conflict, running from a problem, pretending it don't exist, or being afraid to talk about it. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Sometimes we need to pray for the Holy Spirit to continually guide us. Peacemaking is not always giving in. Acting like a doormat letting people run over top of you is not what Jesus had in mind. How to restore a relationship? Talk to God before talking to the other person. 
All your relationships would go smoother if you would just pray more. Tell God your frustrations. Cry out to him. So tell him exactly how you feel. No one can meet all your needs except God. Many of our conflicts are caused by prayerlessness. Instead of God, we look to others to make us happy, and then we get angry when they fail us. God expects you to make the first move if you are the offender or the offended, but God wants you to come to him first. When fellowship is strained or broken, plan a peace conference immediately. Don't procrastinate, make excuses, or promise I'll get around to it someday. Acting quickly also reduces the spiritual damage to. Use your ears more than your mouth. Before attempting to solve any disagreements, you must first listen to people's feelings. Means pay close attention. Focus on their feelings, not facts. Don't try to talk people out of how they feel first. Just listen and let them unload without being defensive. Not that you understand even when you don't agree. Psalm 73, 21 through 22. We all act beastly when hurt. Listening says, I value your opinion. I care about our relationship, and you matter to me. It is a sacrifice to patiently absorb the anger of others, especially if it's unfounded. But remember that Jesus did this for us. Confess your part of the conflict. If you're serious about restoring the relationship, begin with admitting your own mistakes and sin. Jesus said this is the way to see things more clearly. Matthew 7, 5. Also, ask God to show you how much of the problem is your fault. Ask him, am I the problem? Am I being unrealistic, insensitive, or too sensitive? The way we handle conflict could cause a bigger problem than itself. Don't make excuses or shift the blame. Just honestly own up to any part you have played in the conflict. Accept responsibility for your mistakes and ask for forgiveness. Resolving conflict, how you say it isn't important, it's just what you say. Romans 12, 18. Peace always has a price tag. Sometimes it costs our pride. It often costs our self-centeredness. We can walk arm to arm without seeing eye to eye on every issue. Who do you need to get in contact as a result of this? With who do you need to restore fellowship? Don't wait another second. Steps are simple, but they're not easy.